Well, hello, and welcome back to 15-Minute Free Thinking with me, Carpo, your host, as usual. Just rambling in my back office. <laughs> you know, actually, today's topic is quite near and dear to my heart, and I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on this subject. And I want to say that this is actually somewhat of a preamble. I wanted to do this before. Uh, I was just about to read my book that I wrote, The Pharmaceutical Industry. I was able to add the last couple chapters, and I'm glad I waited a couple years. And I just finished adding these couple chapters in. It's about 100 pages or so, but I was going to read it out loud. It might take a couple hours. I'm going to do it in sections, and I'll be uploading this. And I realized in this particular book I wrote, I didn't include a whole lot about psychedelics. I did mention natural medicines and different things like that. But as for psychedelics themselves, I think that they need a discussion all their own. But for today's topic, I'm not going to talk about the benefits or amazing trips I've had. I'm going to talk about perhaps the dangers of psychedelics, and not the physical dangers, but the mental dangers of the delusions that people have while they're taking it. Now, I have many points to make, and I want to get to this. Um, <laughs> the reason for making this is because, and, and to clarify, I consider myself a psychonaut, if you will. Anyone who's a psychedelic user knows what a psychonaut is, and those who don't probably aren't. And a psychonaut is someone who explores the depths of the mind, just like an astronaut would explore space. It's that simple. And I have gone very deep. I've taken light doses of psychedelics. I've taken heavy doses of psychedelics. But I don't like to talk much about it because of a couple of different reasons. One of them is the obvious censorship online. However, I know that even if I, if I word it correctly, it's not that big of a deal. I can still talk about it. I know. This is true. The second reason, and the more important one, is because I don't want to come across as tacky. And I don't want to affect young kids. That's why. Because I know younger kids watch my channel. I even have some of the neighbor kids who are like, oh, I've seen your channel. You know, I don't want to influence kids to use drugs because drugs are not something that kids should be using. And that's something that I really feel strongly in my heart. I, I, I didn't start using drugs at a young age like a lot of people do. And when I hear that 9-year-olds or 10-year-olds are using substances, I'm just, it's cringe. It's not cool. It's not appropriate. And it hinders your growth. But that's another topic altogether. But my reasonings for talking about psychedelics here are to warn people who are just getting into them, especially the younger generation, not to fall into some of these traps that a lot of other people do. And a lot of these traps are extremely... I realize I don't even have my headphones on here. Let me put my headphones on. There we go. That's a little better. A lot of people have taken psychedelics when they're younger and they get to this state of awareness where they think that they know things that other people don't know. And it can lead to, first off, two things. One is pareidolia. And pareidolia is where you see like faces and peoples and pa patterns and clouds, things like that. Instead of me defining it, I'm going to read it to you. And I'm also going to take off the headphones because it feels more comfortable and natural. Okay. Periodolia. Periodolia. Let's see. Peri, peridulia, perli, perlidulia, perlidulia, is the tendency for perception to impose a meaningful interpretation of a, on a nebulous stimulus, usually visual, visual, so one sees an object, pattern, or meaning where there is none. Common examples are per perceived images of animals, faces, or objects in cloud formations, seeing faces in inanimate objects, or lunar pareidolia, like the man in the moon, or the moon rabbit. The concept may extend to include hidden messages in recorded music played in reverse, or at higher or lower than normal speeds, and hearing voices, mainly indistinct, in music or random noise, such as that produced by air conditioners or fans. So, the next one is apophenia. Apophenia 
is the tendency to perceive meaningful connections between unrelated things. The term was coined by psychiatrist uh, Klaus Conrad in 1958 on the beginning of stages of schizophrenia. And this is very important because schizophrenia relates importantly to this topic. But uh, and anyhow, um, it says he defined it as an unmotivated seeing of connections accompanied by a specific feeling of abnormal meaningfulness. He described the early stages of delusional thought as self-referential over-interpretations of actual sensory perceptions as opposed to hallucinations. Apophenia has come to imply a human propensity to seek patterns in random information, such as while gambling. Now, I think these topics are all extremely important, and th that's why I'm talking about these specific conditions. I have seen and realized that, here's the thing, pareidolia, seeing faces in clouds, things like this, are increased strongly during the psychedelic trip itself. We see all kinds of things swirling in patterns. But the apophenia tends to come later. And this is where people start to say, aha, I understand the meaning of life. And what happens after the trip is that the person can develop a guru complex. The Grateful Dead even wrote a song called Estimated Profit, which a lot of deadheads, deadheads know. And it's talking about a guy walking on the shore, you know, down there in California that uh, thinks he's basically connected to God and he's in some reality that others don't understand. Now listen, this is important because a lot of people who have taken psychedelics get to this point where they believe they see things and understand things and patterns that others don't. I've seen it firsthand several times. And I've personally, as a psycho, not have taken psychedelics well over a hundred times. And that's not to brag, but to say that I know what I'm talking about. I've been down these rabbit holes. I have taken large doses once that I, did, I wouldn't take it for six, like six years after that. I have been to some places that I don't want to go back to. And I've read all about the history of it, how the CIA and the military tried to use it to brainwash either soldiers or people. And the one-way mirrors they put in places where they'd dose people, the prostitutes would bring these guys into rooms and they'd dose their drinks and they'd watch them through these mirrors to see how they react. There's a whole history of trying to use it as a weapon, but there were people like Timothy Leary who basically weaponized it on the opposite end. Some people think of him as a hero. He wanted to dose the world, if you will. I don't agree with him. Knowing what we know now, it's not conducive to some people's lifestyles. It's not something that everyone should take. But a lot of people can benefit immensely from proper dosage. But Timothy Leary going around giving people acid, I don't think, was the solution. So anyhow, all of this history um, brings us to today, where there's kind of a second resurgence of this spiritual awakening, if you will. People going to retreats, people calling in, you know, shamans and uh, tarot readers and all these things. And, and uh, look, I want to make it very clear. I mean no offense to anyone who believes in tarot readings or Reiki or, you know, any of these secondary practices because, and I call them secondary because what they are is, if you believe in something, the placebo effect makes it true. This is something that is really that simple. If you firmly believe that something benefits you, then you are likely to get some benefit out of that, as opposed to if you think that it's a bad thing for you, like the nocebo. There have been people who have killed themselves over their own thoughts and medicine that didn't work because people didn't want to believe it would work. The mind is strange and it's complicated and we don't understand it. And when you introduce a new chemical to that and it fills the gap of serotonin, and if you understand how psychedelics work, especially LSD and psilocybin, uh, serotonin, you know, enters these, you know, basically like a key into a lock. Well, LSD fits into that lock but something that's different than it in serotonin. It doesn't detach and reattach. With LSD, it actually goes into the, this lock, then it's broken off, if you will, uh, and the top grows back over it, and it stays shut. 
until it dissolves that LSD molecule completely, which is why the LSD trip is so long, because it takes so long for it to clear out. And the way that LSD activates in the brain, it takes about an hour to really start to heavily take effect. Uh, interestingly enough, even if you enter it into the bloodstream, the same kind of thing. So, we take these drugs, they open up these new realities to us, and then we think we've seen the truth. The truth. And we go too far in our awakening. And the thing, not to be offensive once again to the younger generation, but kids don't know shit in the sense that you don't know the message yet. You can't grasp it. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't see realities that you need to see. What I mean is that it takes years to process information. It takes decades. It takes a lifetime. It really does. Any guru worth, worth his weight and salt, if there are any out there, will tell you the same thing. Uh, that it's slow and steady wins the race, and it takes a lifetime. And that there are no quick paths to truth. I've seen people in, you know, various, you know, groups and, you know, at places who have these noble ideas, like, you know, it's Soak, the Burning Man, the regional one, or the kinds of people you hear interacting and the discussions people have. People have really good intentions to change the world, and they think they've seen something extremely deep, and sometimes we have, and then we grasp that and we utilize it, and that comes down to utilizing it. But knowing the message, and what I mean by that is there are no quick fixes to all of our problems out there, and not even our personal problems either, but um, we can change our mind, of course, but that takes time as well. Uh, but what we're really after is integrity. And integrity means to integrate. And so naturally, we want to be able to integrate into society. So if we have some revelation that we can't share with the world, and we try to sit outside that revelation and say, well, other people just don't understand, that doesn't do anything to help the world. But you have to get people on your side. And I guess that's the revelation I've had over the decades, is that you come full circle back to you go from saying, oh, I'm part of society, to saying, oh, society is totally clueless, to realizing it's probably the Dunning-Kruger effect, which applies to psychedelics, which says the less you know, the more you think you know. Those first epiphanies you have are bullshit. Then you move on and you realize, wow, the big epiphanies do matter. And that usually comes down to some very simple truths, that all that really matters is family and friends and service and work. You want to be able to interact in a life where you're happy, where you have people who are meaningful to you and that you are meaningful to them. It's very important for our psyche. And uh, because of that, to get that, we need to do service and work. And we need to love. And that seems very simple, but it is. That's what it really comes down to. But just because people say, hey, man, love, peace and love, it that doesn't do any good. You also have to be able to smash a, an intruder over the head with a lead pipe if he tries to damn it, you know, harm your family. Uh, you have to be able to run from a bear if you have a problem. So you have to be able to face life's challenges, uh, but also live without fear. I think that's pretty simple, but it's hard to do. The simple idea, <laughs> but hard to do. So, like I said, there is no quick fix. And um, like psychedelics, I think that they're abused by a lot of younger cult, you know, groups of people at fast festivals and raves and concerts. Uh, I know people who have bragged about how much they take. Oh, we party every weekend. And I just say, why? And I'm always trying to tell people, if you're going to do this stuff, respect it. Because it's like reading a book. You don't read the book every day. You read it to relearn the story that you knew but you kind of forgot parts of. And that's what psychedelics do to me. They connect me with nature. But I don't need to know that every minute. I can carry that on in my own brain. And people become dependent on psychedelics in a different way. They are teachers. You don't need to go to class every single day. And uh, so moderation and respect, because it's a sacrament. I know a lot of people ask me about microdosing, you know. Yeah, well, it's very popular in Silicon Valley. But, you know, other than that, I, I, I'm not a big fan of the idea because I think it introduces a molecule to you 
over and over, anything that you're exposed to consistently will build some sort of a tolerance or a different effect. It's just always the way that the brain has worked. LSD and psilocybin are no different. And my thought is this, I'd rather take a large dose once a year than take several smaller doses, you know, throughout the year. Because I can carry that truth with me, that awareness I had through that experience, and it just never goes away. It's the experience of going, oh shit, I took too much almost, for me. <laughs> going, oh no, why did I take that much? That, that's when I know I'm probably going to be able to learn the lessons I need. So, with that said, be patient and be respectful with it. Don't think that you're a god or something or you have some epiphany just because you've seen something one time tripping. You know, I, I've heard this so many times. And a lot of folks will ask me about Deemsters or DMT. And I don't, I don't really have a lot to say about DMT. Although I have a vast, vast amount of experience with it. It's not new to me. I've, I've gone down some weird rabbit holes by myself over a period of a couple of years. And I, here's the thing I can say is DMT is an amazing experience, but it's way too fast to learn anything valuable. Uh, but it, it doesn't mean that it's not useful. It just means that it's very difficult to obtain anything of long-term value because my belief is through the psychedelic experience, if properly implemented, we can pull out a part of ourselves and see a part of ourselves and continually look at it and look at it from all angles. Think of DMT as getting a glimpse of yourself from the outside, but taking psilocybin, uh, you know, the hero dose, let's say, and really seeing yourself for who you are and being able to consider how can I change those things. And that takes time. It does. So... You know, people might wonder, what happened to all the drug channels on YouTube? Where's all the drug channels and all the psychedelic channels? A lot of, you know, some of them still exist, of course, but it's just like cannabis. There's only so much you can talk about. It was kind of a wild west for a while, but that's the thing with psychedelics, and that's why I don't talk about it. You can only say so much. And uh, since YouTube did censor a lot of the content I made, I put it on private and it's now linked up through my patreon account so for any of my patrons who support it for even a buck a month i have access to all my psychedelic videos which this one will probably be on that list pretty soon because i tend to just avoid youtube's algorithms and trying to you know having people flag it or something the whole world of psychedelics is changing though we have seen a total revolution people from all sides of the spectrum you know, supporting this amazing tool for humanity and for growth. And while I might not buy into all the hype surrounding the, <clears throat> you know, the stone date theory from Terrence McKenna or uh, believe that psychedelics are going to change the whole world, I do believe that for people who are willing to give them a chance and give themselves a chance, they can allow us to change who we are in a way that's better for ourselves and for the world. And uh, those are just my true thoughts on psychedelics. And uh, when I say that, I guess I really mean LSD and psilocybin mushrooms, but, you know, we've got DMT containing ayahuasca. We've got ibogaine for, you know, addiction. We've got a whole variety of different drugs. <laughs> but I don't want to talk about the different ones. I really wanted to focus on the experience here. That experience of, oh my God, the world is not what I thought it was. Because uh, it happens. You, you eventually see the world for what it is, but you can't describe it. And that's extremely frustrating. At any rate, I'm hoping I made the points I needed to make here. I wanted to just focus mostly on the fact that a lot of younger people don't get the message yet. The reason I'm passionate about this is I've seen a couple people in my life who lost their minds taking psychedelics just for a period of time. They came back, but it wasn't that they became crazy obsessed with horrible things, but that's possible. And there is that dark side, and that's the main point. You can go into 
the Charles Manson, he gave people LSD. It's not that you can u always use it for good. You might see the nihilistic reality of life and then just take a dark approach to it. Some people do. But for the most part, and I think what's more important is it allows you to see true human nature. And that's something I can't describe, something you can only experience. So thanks for coming along. I appreciate this. And uh, as I said, this is the preamble to my book, which I will be reading soon. And I'll put it up in a multi-part series. Not all of them will be available. I'll keep some of them uh, for later and perhaps just for patrons. Hey, I've got to have something on the side, right? But uh, I'll share the important parts. And uh, I appreciate you all. Talk to you next time. Take care of yourselves. If you're young, don't be a dumbass with psychedelics. Be respectful. Be responsible. You know, don't overdo it. It's That's the only message I can really convey. And yeah, I've taken I've taken everything you can imagine and I don't want to use that as a bragging right like a lot of people do, but rather as a warning that you've got to learn your lesson then move on in life and use that lesson to live your life. So, talk to y'all next time and take care of each other. Be well. Check out the podcast or the video version of this depending on where you're at. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.